the Way Shower is basically um, a story of John Roger as best as we could make it about his real life uh, in a 90 minute form. Uh, both he and I directed it, we co-wrote it. Um, John Roger has been a big influence for me, so uh, I wanted to see how can we make those kinds of things that go on in our life into a movie, make sense of it. Um, so we went to his hometown, Helper, Utah. We shot at, in Price and mostly around uh, the Helper area, which is where he was raised up in the mountains of Rains. We never shot at Rains because that's really all, uh, it's, it's a town that has ruins. It just has foundations of old houses back in the 20s and 30s. Uh, JR was born in 1934. I call him JR. And so uh, we try to have period pieces of the movie relating to the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and current time. And uh, my character is a little bit parallel to my life. I'm a little bit down. I roll into town to get to know and connect more with JR's life and his family. His family in real life are coal miners. Uh, the father was, and it's a coal mining town. Um, the mother in search of different spiritual or religious uh, type of groups, I remember, based on what I've interviewed. And the bottom line is his brother still lives there. A lot of family members still live there. Uh, Dave Hankins, his nephew, is one of the producers of The Way Shower. So The Way Shower means the person or the mentor could be your parents that shows you the way, that shows you the, the way to make the right moves in your life. So uh, that's, that's what the Way Show is about. Okay, talk to us a little bit about uh, getting the opportunity to work with uh, Eric Roberts in the film. First of all, um, one of the processes of working on this film was how I, I believe in God. I don't even believe in God. I just know about God and how God makes things work. And if you ask for it, you get it. And I remember when we were casting for it, I, my ultimate dream was to get a movie star. And why can't I have a movie star? Why can't a low-budget movie have a movie star? And I went up to JR, John Roger, and I said, I want a movie star. And he goes, why don't you just ask for the movie star? Why don't you go call the movie star up? So that's what I did. So I was calling Anthony Hopkins. I had Zoe, Kelly, and all these people call different folks, stars. Uh, and we got a lot of people turned us down. And then uh, my first choice was Eric Roberts for John Rogers' father. And Eric said yes. And I was like, oh, my God. Then I got a little bit greedy. I was like, I'll get Anthony Hopkins for God's voice. And no. So then Peter Stormare was a friend, and I called Peter, and I was like, Peter, would you be in the movie? And he's like, who else is in it? And I said, Eric. And he goes, I know Eric. I'm in. When? And all these guys, though I paid them, they took a substantial uh, um, uh, reduction in their, in their salaries based on the budget of the film. So it was fantastic. Eric is a hero of mine. I am, I know he talks highly of me in the other interview, but I remember Eric from Popo Gurnage Village. Uh, I never knew he was Julia Roberts' brother because there was no Julia Roberts when there was an Eric Roberts. There was a Star 80, uh, there was a Runaway Train, there was a King of the Gypsies. I lived that whole era and I saw a rise of an amazing actor and there was no one like him. Then I saw him on Broadway do Burn, Burn, Burn This, and it was phenomenal. John, John Malkovich had just left, and Eric came in. I never saw John do it. Eric just stunned Broadway. And then I saw, you know, his career kind of, you know, took a dip, and then it just is an on, you know, that's the career of everyone's. They come and go, and then, you know, Eric, any moment, will just be stunning people again by his, uh, again, I see him, I saw him in a Dark Knight and The Expendables. I mean, the guy is, like, unstoppable, and I hope he never quits. And 
Eliza is another awesome lady, hus uh, wife, Eliza Roberts. She's also in The Way Shower, and her talent is phenomenal. She helped cast the movie. Uh, I'm forever grateful for her uh, um, contribution to the movie. Nobody really got paid a lot of money for this. My crew, my cast is phenomenal. Back in Utah, period, including Helper, they were just a very... It's not that you take advantage of these people, but they're just willing to serve and help the cause. And once you're introduced, once David, once I asked John Roger for help, he introduced me to his brother, Delisle. Delisle turned me on to his son, David Hinkins. Then you meet Willie Ellington, probably the only black in, uh, in, uh, in Price. Uh, he was 13 of, of siblings back in the days when he was born but but basically if it wasn't for them the, the door wouldn't open once the door got open and helper everyone chipped in i mean from louise to charlie hamilton everybody in helper uh, uh you know david and mary lou uh at the balance rock these are all little local you know the the it's probably half of Sundance, really, if you look at the Sundance little Main Street, helper is that, you know, with not a lot of money. Once, one day it will have that, you know, it's, it's just filled with richness in, in, its, in the places and possibilities of what you can shoot there. It just takes a while to get there. It's about an hour and a half from Provo, but fantastic. I mean, I would never trade it for the world. I'd go there now and do another movie there because of the people because of what, they, uh, what their character is about. And not necessarily do they, do they kill you. I remember the mayor, who's the butcher, came up to me and said, hey, look, we don't have a law for giving you a permit, but why don't you just hire the cops? So we hired the cops, and we did. It was great. I never had an army of police officers you know, work for me before, but it was great. Uh, the biggest surprises was uh, getting shoes for Eric Roberts. <laughs> that was a, that was my fault, Eric. And mostly it was, uh, you know, as I learned as a director, and I, I'm the kind of director that wants to know everybody's job and what they're doing, make sure everybody's happy. I totally did not care about the wardrobe department, and uh, I will never do that again. I, I promised to uphold the all the departments, and I thought I would. I thought that I could, tr you know, I trusted every department to do their job. That was the first time I was not going to micromanage everybody. And, but at some point, you have to step in and see the, have a meeting. We weren't having meetings, and we weren't sharing enough. And there were a lot of women running that department, and I guess I wasn't really listening to the, uh, I should be listening a lot more. Uh, I think running a movie set is, is kind of like a marriage, uh, especially if a lot of women are running it. And you know, women will run stuff. They just want to let you know about it, that you're not doing it correctly. <laughs>